right. Okay. We are uh, recording. Oh, God. Jesus Christ. Fucking cats. If you, if you hear noise in the background, it's these two fucking cats running around like crazy people. I really doubt we're going to hear your cats in the background. <laughs> you got a pretty decent microphone, sir. I, I don't think it's going to be a problem. Yeah. Well, they, they are fucking loud. <laughs> <laughs> What's well, got them all fired up today? What, what day is today? It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Right on. I forgot. Cats are toddlers. Yes. Yes. Cats are, cats are indeed toddlers. All right, Brandon Chalmers, instead yeah. of the uh, State of the Union, what are you geeking on tonight? Uh, so, Jamie Noguchi, I went down a weird rabbit hole today. So, in preparation – okay, I want to give you an idea like how my brain works and how I can pinball from thing to thing. Like my, my brain is essentially a bowling lane and with the bumpers up where I can just ram off of each thing to finally get to a goal. So I'm heading to uh, Schaumburg, Illinois for a work thing. It's right outside of Chicago. OK. Um, coming up uh, right in the beginning of March, like right, literally like I'll come back on my birthday. Oh, man. So, yeah, I know. Right. So um, because of this, I am kind of loosely preparing for packing to take a work trip. This is the first work sponsored trip I'll actually be taking Ooh, with the company. Fun. I know. We fancy going to corporate office. That's you, right. Do you get an expense account? Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, it, it's actually real. Like, they're, they're uh, round trip direct, direct flights. I get my own room. We get a per diem uh, every day. On top of being able to then um, – all the lunches and dinners are all organized by the company as like a big group building sort of thing. Oh. Um the, I can I can kind of give a loose idea of, of what I do for anyone who's curious. I am the warehouse and logistics manager for a uh, wellness company. So we do kind of like in-office wellness. So the idea is we bring our staff in. We say, hey, let's take a snapshot of your health to see whether or not you need to see your doctor or maybe your casual like, yeah, I really don't want to spend the money on that is A-OK. Um <laughs> Like we all do, like we all put off all this stuff. So the idea is we come to you uh, for a lot of larger uh, companies. So this way, you know, you're not wasting a bunch of time, or whatever it is. Um, so we are all meeting together to go have a meeting that is annual and it meets up with the field team. And like we've got, uh, you know, the better part of like 300 people out in the field that we that we work with. And then these are like the upper level managers. So I support all of them for all of their needs across the country. Super boring. But to, to give anyone who's a curiosity of like what I actually do when I mention like future employers, for the record, it's warehouse logistics and if you're looking for somebody holler at your boy <laughs> anyway so um so this is the first trip that i'll be taking like for the company to go out there um for this whole thing so because of that my brain goes into what do you need to take need to take on this trip and then what are some dumb things that i've Seriously? So, you know how we talked last week about the bags and whatever it is? So, yeah. I'm a whore, and I went on to <laughs> Chrome's website. Um, so, to give people an idea, and I'll grab it here, because um, I've got the, the new ones upstairs, but I've got the old one. So, Ooh, fancy. For the longest time, I was a proponent, and this is due to Ross Nover, of Chrome Messenger Bags. Oh, he fucking um, loves that thing. They're fucking great because they're heavy duty and they really work well and they're waterproof and they've got this cool like Wait, chrome belt going. buckle thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I am a whore as Jamie goes to, to go around and decided that uh, my issue with them – and I'm going to end up recapping this when Jamie comes back. Jamie got a new bag. No, this is an Did old – this is an old bag, but uh, okay. this this is the only thing I have that's equivalent. This is the Destiny 2 launch special edition. <laughs> I uh, forgot you 
bad. I I couldn't get the special edition, so I begged my brother to get get me the bag. And right so on. He 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 dropped me the bag. But this is the only messenger bag that I have. Right on. Okay, so my 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 issue, if I were to have one. Uh, are two things. Um, one is that the regular Chrome Messenger bag, while it is incredibly heavy duty, it is also physically heavy because the interior of it is lined with like a vinyl material that you would find with like old car seats from like the 50s. <laughs> so it's waterproof. Like it, nice. To, to give you an idea, this is a bag that is designed for bike messengers in New York or any other large city. Postmates. They're meant to be. Right. So they're meant to, they're meant to strap tight to your body, hold up against a lot of abuse and be completely waterproof. And it is an outstanding bag and I love it dearly. Now, with that said, I was dumb when I went and got this all those years ago. I bought this bag, god, what am I talking about? 7 years ago maybe. Mm-hmm. Um I went to a bicycle shop in downtown Baltimore uh, named Race Pace. If you're curious, Race Pace is fucking rad. I'm not super into bikes, but the shop was super nice and they were really kind. Uh, There's a bunch of them all over town. So they were selling Chrome Messenger bags, and they had a special edition one that was designed like a 57 Chevy to (laughs) blue and white. Now, I don't know if the camera is going to pick up on that, but it's more of like a dark blue color. Mm -hmm. So – the problem is, is that no matter how much I oxy clean this bag, it is never white <laughs> and has not been since the first year I had it. So it's got that wear and tear. Talking, I look like a fucking hobo when I travel with this thing. <laughs> and I'm really torn because it is a super cool heavy duty bag and it looks like crap. And in turn, I've been looking for a daily carry bag for my camera to be able to put everything. So Chrome is still currently doing a sale, if you're curious. Uh, go ahead and search uh, Chrome Messenger Bags, and I picked up the welterweight bag. It is less than half of the weight. Oh, uh, nice. It's a lot of internal stuff. It is not as waterproof, but it's still water-resistant. So so long as I don't stand in a like full-on monsoon, none of my stuff's going to get wet. Um and it is in charcoal and gray, so this way, if it ends up getting dirty, who cares? Um, so I picked that up uh, on sale. Uh, normally, the bags are $140. The bag was on sale for 66 Nice. So that is a pretty serious sale. If you're curious about getting a bag, um, a decent messenger bag, if you're curious about Chrome, um, I adhere to them. Ross Nover adheres to them. Uh, Jamie Baldwin has been carrying hers for years. And our own uh, General Storm Sketch, uh, Chris Scott, also carries a Chrome Messenger bag. That's that's four art fighters all supporting one product. There's a reason why they last forever. Um, they, they guarantee everything. Anyway, so I've been looking for other things to carry along with this. Now – I have a piece of hard side luggage, right? Yeah. This is where I start to pinball. I then pinball to my other piece of luggage, which is my actual suitcase. I have a smaller style suitcase that I take to conventions and whatever it is, and I picked hard side. So this way it doesn't end up getting crushed by TSA if I have to check my luggage. Right. Okay. So I have a piece of hard side luggage. It is gray. It was a gift from my wedding. It is a nice piece of equipment, but it is gray and it is boring. (laughs) And it is also hard to spot. Now, Jamie Nagush, you were one of the people who kind of put me on to wrapping something around the handle yeah. or like a strap around it or something to identify your bag. Yeah, yeah. So because I am still the the Fast and Furious tuner head way back when in my brain, I sticker bomb things. <laughs> I've done it forever. I still do it. I know it makes me look like a fucking child. I don't care. So with that said... I then immediately did a mental inventory about my bag and realized that I had been visiting all of these cool places and I hadn't been picking up stickers at all these places. Mm. It's just kind of the whole point. Like mm-hmm. I've got a bunch of stickers from like Art Friends and stuff like that and, you know, Ocean City and a few other places that I had visited. But, you know, when I went to the Shenandoah National Parks, I never actually stopped because I had the dog with me. So I never stopped in there. Um, visitor center or anything else like that to pick up any stickers or anything. So I thought, hey, I should totally pick up a few stickers for all of the places that I have been, especially the national parks. <clears throat> to Etsy I go. 
I go, I support small business. This is what I'm doing. So I go and I end up spending thirty dollars on stickers a day from from Etsy from nice. random artists who I never met before, just doing random searches, found some cool aesthetic looking stuff, picked up a bunch of stickers that are on their That's way. So fun. This is how my brain works. Like I'm I'm happy to spend some money and I'm glad that I'm spending it at Etsy as opposed to other places. I'm sure aesthetic. I'm probably a monster. This is where we find out that Etsy's like the Uber of art sales or something like that. And I should have went directly to the artist websites, but look, I I'm going I'm only gonna make with so much effort. Right, anyway. right, 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 right. <clears throat> so in turn, I end up viewing all of these national park stickers as I was searching for a sticker for Shenandoah National Valley. One of my favorite parks, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw I went there with a the dog a few months ago. Um, it's fucking beautiful. If you get the opportunity, you should absolutely go. If you don't necessarily have anyone to go with, please, I beg of you, hit me up. I will fucking go. I'll drive <laughs> you down there. I'll pay the gas. You can ride in the passenger seat. It's beautiful and fun and just fucking beautiful. Like, I cannot... I, I cannot describe how amazing it is to spend like the better part of an hour climbing up a hill that is so steep that it takes you an hour to travel a mile to then see the look of the summit that is up there and being able to turn almost an entire 360 degrees and see for miles of mountain peaks from the top of the highest uh, peak in the Shenandoah Valley. Fucking gorgeous. I'll do it. Every day and twice on Sunday. <laughs> so because of this, now this is where my brain pinballs again. I then immediately make the decision that I need to visit other national parks. So much so where I started pricing out what other national parks are relatively close and started figuring out where I can go and where I can take the dog with me. So I'm currently working on trying to uh, get a trip to Ohio together to go see the next closest national park <laughs> <laughs> and had a conversation with my wife this evening about the fact that I will definitely be visiting that one. And I may or may not squirrel a little money together here and there to take a flight out to possibly Utah or California oh, to wow. go to real ones my wife is not a hiker she doesn't enjoy it doesn't enjoy the outdoors like i do yeah i want to see this place and i'd love to take the dog but if i can't take the dog i don't want to not go and mm -hmm. not see these things. Mm -hmm. like while i've still got a decent job before the economy falls apart and there's another recession before there are a bunch of unknowns that i don't know about where i plan a trip four or five years down the road which i have no fucking idea how much i'll be making then let's do it now like just I'll, I'll buy the flights. I'll, I'll rent the crappiest car. I'll drive out to the middle of nowhere and I'll go and get the photos and I'll go experience the thing and be able to visit the Red Rocks in Utah or go out to California and go out to Moab or wherever and yeah. go experience all of these things that I hold near and dear because there's nothing like taking that adventure and ending up that place and going, yep, I did a thing. Mm -hmm. And then crying over Joshua Tree because humans are terrible. Yeah, I know. Uh, the plus side is, is I, I, I have not and probably will not partake in the extracurricular activities that are enjoyed at Joshua Tree. Yeah. So there's no real reason for me necessarily. Like, knocking off on the list, sure. But I, I won't hold it as near and dear. It is a fucking shame, though, after I found out how sh how little those trees grow every year. Because I think it's like half a centimeter yeah, or something. And now a lot of them are destroyed because of the fucking... Yeah. Uh, so bad. I I don't know if I can blame Joe Rogan, but I'm going to blame Joe Rogan for that somehow. Oh, oh yeah? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I figure it's probably super <clears throat> douchey MMA fans who are also big into drugs heading out in the middle of nowhere and having a Joshua Tree experience, but knowing that no one's ever going to come stop them from cutting down a tree. So fuck it. Mm. Yeah, that's that's where my math goes. Like it takes a certain level of dude, bro, that would never normally go out to Joshua Tree to go out there and go do that thing. Yeah, I don't know that they're joe rogan fans but i'm betting they're joe rogan fans <laughs> also if you're angry with me about shitting on joe rogan i'll send you my address <laughs> i'm feeling froggy no no one's watching us anyway so fuck it <laughs> yeah nonsense people are watching us we have dozens literally dozens <laughs> of fucking do a cast fans but <laughs> 
Anyway, yeah, so uh, that's what I'm geeking about, but that gives you an insight. I went from, hey, I got a bag to, hey, I need stickers to, hey, I need to plan a trip across the country. Nice. I did this math, including buying the $30 worth of stickers on Etsy. Thank you, Etsy. Uh, in about 35 minutes today. What? Now, now what you need? Because I've been going down a different rabbit hole. You oh, need shit. a you need a little drone so you can shoot B roll footage of, oh. of these parks. And See? Th- and there's a place that you can actually sell that stuff, and it'll it'll pop there. It'll send your um, B roll to like the the top four stock oh. video places, and you might be able to sell some shit. Um, Jamie, I just signed up because I started shooting more B-roll and stuff, and I'm I'm putting up clips, and I'm not I, I just started, so I'm probably not going to make any money on this stuff, you know, right now. But like, if you're going out there, you might as well get some footage. <laughs> Jamie, if you're asking me to become part of your ground floor business of selling drones, I don't know if I can tax write off a drone or a trip to national parks. I don't know if I'm legally allowed to film in national parks. Um, I think you are because I don't know if you can do it with a drone. Ah, that's true. Because I think the rules are different for flying things inside of a park. Like to my knowledge, I couldn't like bring one of my RC cars into a national park and go tear everything up. I know I can do it at like Assateague mm-hmm. because that is a Maryland national. Um, I'm sorry, a Maryland state park, which I had no idea Assateague wasn't actually a national park. Do you know that motherfucker, the the Orange King, made the arches in St. Louis a national park, but completely like skipped. Yeah, like what? The only man I know who would suddenly decide that a gigantic metal structure is a national park. Like, I don't know when that happened, but I learned that today, too. Like, what? Why? Like, of, nothing against the arches. Like, yeah. here's the thing. If you're from St. Louis, I know our own Ross Nover, who will not watch this, is from St. Louis. But if for some reason he hears about it, I got no heat on St. Louis. <laughs> I'm sure it's a wonderful town. I've never been. I hear the barbecue is great. I've been. I'd be happy it's fun. They're the cool. Weekend. Yeah. Right, yeah. Like, I'd be happy to spend the weekend. But when I think national parks, I think, like... An area. Expanding, yeah, like... Expanding vistas, an amazing place that you can't naturally see everywhere else. Yeah. A, a corner of the United States that is protected to preserve its beauty. Yeah. So this way we don't oversaturate. We don't build on top of it. It's one of those things where, like, everyone looked around and went, this place is fucking gorgeous. Like, we, we got <laughs> we, we to gotta, we gotta at least, like, put some put some barriers up here and just go, look – Y'all fuckers can hang out and drink and everything else like that, but like, yeah. no building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just some some restrictions. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so I, I learned that today. But I don't know if, um, if they actually allow drones. That'd be something I'd be curious about looking into. Oh yeah. Uh, I know the RC car kid in me is has always been curious about a drone. Um, if I can find a tax write-off for it, <laughs> they they I'm shoot they shoot 4K. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying it's going to get purchased before a drum kit. Yeah, but I could be talked into dumb ideas. <laughs> well, I, I also could be talked into having a co-pilot for some of these adventures there, uh, Jamie. <laughs> Jamie. I I need footage. I got to shoot shit. I got to learn I, how to use I, my camera. I, I I'll say this now. If you buy the drone, I will cover us driving out wherever. I'm not saying <laughs> flights, but if we're talking about driving somewhere, I will gladly foot the bill for the drive. I, I wonder if we know anyone who has a drone because uh, a friend of ours, Aaron Surak, was talking about a drone at some point. And she – Johnny Shryock, Aaron Surak, both gearheads like me. And I have borrowed many equipments from them. (laughs) So there may be a drone somewhere in our circle of friends. I I think there needs to be a conversation internally here. Uh, Also, I'd like to throw out there, if you haven't been following Erin on social media, she's doing the one thing that all of us, like hipster and hipster adjacent people are doing. She bought an 80s van. She's gunning it. She's turning it into an adventure vehicle. And she's just going to go travel the country. And I am 
beyond jealous. I, like, I, th- I think what we should do is like, if we can't hitch a ride with her, like if, if she's riding out during a week and neither of us can actually ride with her, we should at least meet her somewhere and like, yes, you know, for a yes. weekend and like I am do stuff. all about this idea, all about this idea. Yeah. Cause it, there's a lot of stuff that, um, I haven't seen in this country. I'm more of a city person myself, right but, on. but like, being outside with friends is where it's at. Yeah, I, I, I want a travel buddy. Usually, I have to take the dog because my wife will not go places and explore with me. Yeah. So, if I have you with me, I do not necessarily need the dog. I'm down to go wherever. Yeah. If we can do it and then get footage, and I can, I can go and knock places off of my list of like. This is, you know, I went to this place in this place and I can fucking add a sticker to that goddamn suitcase. That's the idea. Yeah. I'm just looking for stickers. That's really all it is. I could buy them and lie, but I really don't want to. No, you gotta. Yeah. I, I want to experience the thing. Like, I want to be able to say, hey, have you ever been to yada yada? Yeah, I went once with my buddy. It was fucking rad. We shot footage of this. I got these photos. It's a once in a lifetime thing. I really want to go back. I don't know if I'll ever go back, but I really want to go back. Like, I want to be able to say that about all of these things. Yeah. I said that about Shenandoah and I've gone back multiple times. I say this about other places and I want to go back multiple times. Like that's kind of the whole idea. I want to experience these things over and over again and not necessarily just the ones that are within two hours of Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that could be fun. That could be fun. And and we could monetize it. (laughs) I don't know if we can monetize it, but if we can break even, we can try. We can try to monetize it. If we can break even, I call that a net win. That's the idea, Jamie. I'm setting realistic goals in 2019. Yeah. Not losing money. You just That's, you turn your Instagram into like a travel Instagram and and post like inspirational quotes and photos and shit, and then like okay. get sponsor deals and stuff. Sure, I don't know. Who would suddenly pay me to be like nature's Michael Caine from Batman? But sure, let's do that. Michael Caine. <laughs> Why don't we do all these push-ups? <laughs> <laughs> this is the second Michael Caine reference today, by the way. Michael um, Caine. <laughs> anyway, Jimmy Gucci, as I've taken up, God only knows what, 20 minutes of the podcast? No, Sorry, it's fine. Three. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, what are you geeking about? So I'm not necessarily geeking on this, but I figured uh, since we we talked about it enough last week, I should do a follow up on oh, on on a Vigi game demo, and I ah! realized and I realized that the demo is not necessarily representative of a game. So uh, let me let me. What? So I played Anthem. Yeah. Uh, the Anthem demo. Okay. And so let me let me tell you what I look for in a demo. And this is just me. So like I'm I'm perhaps the wrong the wrong audience. <laughs> <laughs> I went out to visit my brother uh, a couple of years ago for PAX. Destiny 2 was coming out. There was a huge like Bungie rented out the local theater there, um, like this fancy theater. Um, they had a whole event thing going on. They had they had work stations set up that you could you could try PVP, you could try uh, campaign stuff. And they load you in and you have everything. Like you look in your inventory. Normally when you're playing a game like Destiny, you have to grind for various weapons. Like, you know, you have you start off with a sidearm um, in the regular game and then you, you slowly upgrade. You might get a scout rifle here and there and an auto rifle, but it takes you a while to grind through it. This demo, they gave you everything. You want to try out the new exotic, you got the new exotic. You want to try a bazooka, you got a bazooka. You want to try like... Um, like a, an exotic hand cannon, you got that exotic hand cannon. They just they just gave you everything. You didn't have to unlock your subclasses. Everything was set. So like, you're playing at 100% full power. So you get to try out the movement. You get to try out the special abilities. You get to try mm-hmm. the weapon classes. Like you, the the SMGs were kind of new, not really, but you got to try them. The linear fusion rifle, you got to try out that. You got to try the sunshot, which is you know you you got a slice of everything. And that gives you a sense in like maybe 10 minutes, whether or not this is a game for you, because you get to try everything. You get to, you don't have to grind. You don't have to unlock anything. You don't have to spend like 40 fucking hours of a demo just to try all of the things. So that's, that's kind of what I look for when somebody says, here's a demo. 
Like if you get a demo piece of software, it's the full version of the software minus maybe like exporting a high res version of your video or high res version of your thing. Or maybe there's going to be a watermark like Maya used to have like a personal learning edition that was fully function Maya, except when you render stuff out, there was this hideous watermark, but that's fine. You still learn the software. Right. Anthem wants you to play Anthem as if you were like playing the game. So they want you to sit there and grind for like 40 fuck hours. What? To unlock some, like you start off at level 10 at level 12, you unlock other javelins, which are the suits. So you get to try various other suits. You get to try the heavy suit. You get to try the ninja suit. Guess, right. Guess who never got to that point? Jiminy Gucci. You're looking at him. Because every time I would get to a place where I was fighting a boss battle, the game would kick me. Like, the servers would kick me. The one time I got back into the game, the door had closed on the boss battle. And our two other teammates were stuck in the boss battle dead, but we couldn't oh. revive them. What? So we're stuck Wait, on the outside. Does the boss battle stop? The, the boss is still running around, killing these two guys who are dead, and we can't revive them because you can't... There's no self-res in certain zones. So me and this other random dude that we we're playing are just sitting here shooting this door, hoping it would open up so that we could continue and possibly shoot this boss down. So I don't know that I actually got to play Anthem. <laughs> I, I have no idea. Like, I didn't get to try half of the guns systems that were there. There's a sniper rifle that I wanted to try, but I had to craft it. I couldn't collect enough stuff to craft the sniper rifle. There was like a, a grenade launcher that I couldn't, I couldn't, I needed to craft some shit. So I needed to run around and collect more stuff to like learn how to fucking craft that so I could see if I liked it. There was a hand cannon that was kind of cool. Um, there was like a, like, but every time I wanted to try out a new weapon, I would have to stop playing, go back to the forge, re-equip that gun on my suit, and then go back into the mission. So like, I had to Wait, hop so back you and forth. Can't, you can't just change guns between a hand cannon and a sniper rifle in the field? You get two. You get okay. two. You get two, two? weapons. You get two, two primary slots. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know if, if, if people, I don't know if this is a type of gameplay that people are used to, but like even in the division and, um, uh, I think the division has a similar layout with like the third person behind the shoulder shooting thing, even in the division, if you got a new gun, you could equip it immediately and try it out on your mission and, and figure out what's going on. So I had to, I had to stop playing, go back to the forge, walk through town, walk to the forge, re like equip the two things that I wanted to try and then jump back into the mission. And I, and I was like, I don't, I don't know if I'm actually playing Anthem. I don't know. I can't evaluate this game because I, 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 I think you might not necessarily be playing it, but you're damn sure experiencing it. <laughs> it was so frustrating, Brandon. Like I was, I, I was telling Dan, cause Dan played it. Dan played it a lot longer. He actually got to unlock the ninja suit, which is what he likes to play with. And, and he seemed to be doing shocker. Yeah. <laughs> he seemed to have a little bit better of a time than I did, but I was like, man, if I'm having this much trouble, if Brandon hops on it, he's going to chuck his PS4 out the fucking window. Cause this yeah, thing, no, I'm, I'm not downloading it. There's a reason why I didn't download it. I understand that I don't have the patience for this kind of silly bullshit now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's, let's cover a few things here. Dan also for or like to, to be transparent to everyone listening, Dan played the game. He got farther than you did, but he also said in the open Slack conversation that we had about this, that he probably won't buy it for another year yeah. to let it work its, its kinks out yeah. before it happens. By yeah. the way, that will never happen. Yeah. He will not buy this game a year from now because a year from now, this game will not be, anything it'll be like titanfall or anything else like that that was mm -hmm. cool for a hot second you played for a while and then you put away not a lot of people are necessarily even talking about overwatch anymore now i'm sure there's corners of the internet that are super fucking excited about it but like ever yeah. since they released the, the little like uh the hamster in the ball i i don't know if anyone's been talking about overwatch oh, and i didn't even right. download, I forgot about I didn't that. download that like uh, there's a new character 
Actually, there may be two new characters yeah, that I a, actually tried. Yeah, there's another character. Uh, she has Scottish a, lady or something. Yeah, like that? something. Well, um, that was a previous new character, but there's another yeah, new I character know. that's another lady. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> then there's three characters that I haven't played. She's a she's like a cowboy. She's got long hair. And she she has a robot butler assistant dude that you can call and he, he does yeah. stuff yeah sounds okay. amazing cool. i'm i i want I, the I movie continue, i want the movie i continue to be amused by overwatch's non-backstory backstory mm-hmm. that game is infinitely interesting and i've always found it doesn't follow through because i only get snippets of the characters i want more i, I um, want the adventure version i of want this. a goddamn story mode yeah. i want a story mode i yeah. want it now i want to know yeah. that it ties other things i'll pay extra for it i'll buy a whole nother overwatch game i'm good yeah if overwatch 2 is the story mode i'm in yeah hear me now internet i will pay an additional 60 (laughs) dollars cash usd to play a story mode of overwatch Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. make the thing yeah just make it yeah i don't care if it's the same thing as the weird like one off thing that they did where it was like you went through a bunch of different areas on the same map and then you worked together as a team or whatever the fuck it was where there was like a backstory mode where they had like the dwarf looking dude and then the giant guy in the suit and then tracer and then soldier 76 and they were all working for overwatch cool yeah that was I'm fun good with that i'm good with that more of that and then give me a little bit of cinematics in between and then hit all of the maps like mm-hmm. i don't need you to make all new things just Give me a cool story mode. I, yeah. I, I want to tie these things together. Yeah. Like, I just found out apparently Soldier 76 is gay. Cool. Can we have a story mode where he avenges his lost lover? He pines after somebody. He does something where, like, I get more than weird strategic dad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm, uh, I'm good with that. And I, I want to play I'm the picking, fan service. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I... And I get that I am picking a super basic character and asking for that. But I think if I can get the super basic character, we can continue on from that. Fuck it. Release the story modes the same timeline you release the characters. I'm cool. I'll keep coming back. Mm -hmm. I'll learn to play all the other guys. I'm good. I'll even fucking play Hanzo if I get a story mode. I really will. (laughs) I will. I'll shoot arrows like fucking shitty Hawkeye. I'm in. I'm, I'm in. Yeah. I'll do the thing. Yeah. But I, again, OK, so when am I buying you Borderlands? <laughs> well, aren't aren't they coming out with a third one? No, they, they've been talking about coming out with a third one forever. Here's what they have. Okay. They have the first one. They have the second one. They have the pre sequel. So they do have three games. If you buy the Handsome Jack collection, which is what I am offering, you get the second game and the third game for the price of one game. That's awesome. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And the pre-sequel is set in space. That's great. Right. Like, space. So the, the the second one, you get to pick between, like, a dude who can dual wield, a ninja with a sword who can phase shift, a guy who has a turret, and then some sort of necromancer. And then they added, like, two extra classes to that one. <clears throat> and then the other one, you go in space, you get, like, some sort of weird space cowboy. You get to play the cool robot claptrap you I fucking loves. And, like... The game's got so much character. God, yeah. Anyway, how are you we, get to play in fucking space. Yeah. I, how, how are we not? How have we not I, done this before? Have I not been offering for right. now weeks? Yeah. Yeah. I, we'll, we'll get on this. We'll get on this. I, I am. I am willing to throw money at you for a thing. <laughs> I don't care if you need me to buy it and like send it to you. If you need me to PayPal you, if you need me to Venmo you, um, I'm in. I just want someone else to play with. Yeah, I want to play with somebody else? Is it is it PvP or is it just strictly like story strictly, op- open world? Strictly story mode that is open world. You get a bunch of different objectives. You work on objectives together. You each have your own save game, so you jump into each other's games. Oh, fun! But I am now like I'm playing through the second game again. I played through it on Xbox, so I'm playing through it. Excuse me, on PlayStation, I'm at like level twenty five or something like that. Okay. Uh, so if I jump into your game, I can help Sherpa you through some things. I can also give you guns that I have on me oh, that are way more powerful for you. There's also in the new one, there's a grind mechanism where you can take two guns of different classes and stick them into a machine 
and they basically make a turducken of a gun and combine some of the features and you don't know what you're going to get. And there's something like, I think, 300,000 unique guns. Motherfucker. And it's fucking rad. It's fucking rad. And it's got a great sense of humor. And yeah. you get to shoot little people with with uh, with hatchets and <laughs> there's all sorts. Just so much dumb stuff. Like, uh, yeah. Th- yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. I will. I will give Anthem one thing. Okay. The the customization is a lot of fun. Cool. Like there. So there's a there's a new style of rendering in game engines called PBR. It's physics. I think it's physics based lighting or physical based lighting. But it, sure, it, it's, it's beer. But go on. Yeah. It's it's a way to make. Uh, materials in a game that interact like they would in real life. So like you can have real cloth, you can have metal, cool. you can have like okay. all this kind of stuff. And so they have all of these options, like the the undershirt, you can make it either leather or pleather or like mesh or this that, and the other thing and stuff. Okay. Um, and that's fun for dress up. The problem is to get more customizations, you have to spend the in-game currency. And to earn the in-game <laughs> currency, you either earn it or you pay for it. So like Thank you, Electronic Arts. Imagine. Have I mentioned, Jamie, that you buy this game once and then you don't buy anything else? <laughs> and in this case, you won't buy a goddamn thing. Yeah. Yeah. It will cost you nothing. It'll cost you as much as that demo cost you. Yeah. No. And by the way, I'd like to go back to something that you said a while ago. A demo is supposed to be a teaser trailer or a snapshot of the thing. Yeah. It is supposed to entice you into spending your hard earned money. Yeah. If you have to spend all of your time dicking around trying to grind spending hours on dumb shit to get locked out of a room to be able to buy a pleather shirt you're not playing a futuristic shooter game no you're playing a customization app for hot topic that's true that's true you get to like emo out your robot but you can't actually fucking play the game Look, all I'm saying is I think the only way that this game is going to be fun. Also, fun fact, if you plug a thumb drive into your PS4, you can load your own soundtrack and you need to fire up like some My Chemical Romance, tear back into this game (laughs) and just start playing the jams from 2006 and and really just like get deep into it. <laughs> like take that hair, flop that bad boy over and just start talking about how you hate your dad and just start fucking tearing into it. <laughs> Maybe it'll be enjoying. Yeah. I doubt it. Yeah, I if they if they did it like that that Destiny demo where they gave me all the guns, they gave me all the suits, I could choose which suit I wanted to use, then I feel like I would have been able to give a proper yeah, I, I, I'm happy that they didn't Batman you and make you walk through all of the boring shit. But let me ask you a question. Yeah. If you got access to everything and it's that boring, how much of a fucking slog is it going to be to get to that point? Yeah. And, and and that's what I don't know, because like the more stuff you get, the more powerful your dude is. It might be it might be rad. I don't know. I got that experience when I played that Destiny demo because I got I got my Guardian at like not a hundred percent, but I got my Guardian at seventy five percent. Right. And yeah. That's, I know. And that's awesome. Right. Yeah. You got to use the special features. You got to use a few uh, a few bonuses. You got to play with a couple. Yeah. You know. I got uh, the Kamehameha. Uh, like. Right. Yeah. Know. Like you, you got a chance to play with the thing. You got a, a chance to smash some Vex or whatever it is. And like you're like, cool, this is more what I already like with some new stuff yeah. and some things yeah and i'm gonna and grind it, for that that sounds yeah. awesome yeah yeah they, they, they put some new paint on the same villains by the way that's what's fucking wrong with destiny yeah. um it, the, lazy writing yeah 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 i don't know what the fucking grind more is but can you spend less time on it and the cards that don't fucking matter <laughs> and more time on actually the story <laughs> seriously um <laughs> as i throw shade literally at your brother it's fine uh, he doesn't it, write it he just programs yeah, I, <laughs> whatever <laughs> he, he's not in those rooms if my brother I, I, if if my brother had more control over the game it would be a different beast 
I, look, all I'm saying is, is he's just implicit. Like he's complicit in what's going on. That, that, <laughs> that's like saying I work for the Catholic Church, but I don't necessarily agree with some of their views on treating children. That's like true. That's at some true. along the way, when you're paying the like, if if you're the accountant for the Catholic Church, at some point you have to decide like, well, I'm cool with this. Or I need to go get a new job. Yeah. So I'm not saying that your brother's responsible for the lazy writing that's in Destiny, but I'm saying your brother's responsible for the lazy writing. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Noguchi, what are we actually talking about now that we are 41 minutes into this? Okay. I can't believe no one actually bothers to listen to this. I, I know no one actually does. But Greg does. I Every can- time we upload, Greg is there. Greg, I love you. Yeah. Thank you. We're, we're, we're basically doing this for Greg because That's, I'm good. Yeah. We should really start talking about things he cares about then, because yeah. I guarantee you the 41 minutes of video games and national parks things are probably not hitting his wheelhouse. <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to take a shot in the dark here. All right. Um, this is a weird topic, but I, I wanted to pick your brain about something. Um, so this past weekend was uh, the Super Bowl, which is basically the 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 WrestleMania of football, the, uh, the San Diego Comic Con of yeah, football. There, there's an argument to be made that WrestleMania is the Super Bowl of wrestling, but yeah, you know that's whatever. The the World Series of never of mind football. which one came first doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> the uh uh what well, god what i'm trying to go, like go through like all these you really don't need to the avns stop, stop. the <laughs> avns of football <laughs> right right the, on okay. the grammys of football the yeah, oscars no, I, of football I, I i get it the 10 year anniversary of super r fight to football, oh, football. i, I understand. yeah now i know you gave up football because it's terrible um yes and but i did super bowl and i I only watch the Super Bowl because um, a friend of mine invites a whole bunch of people over. We hang okay. out. It's a time. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Super Super Bowl is kind of like non-religious people's religious holiday. Like right. we can all agree to gather together on this a Sunday, share food and decide to support one thing over the other, or at least in most cases, have a positive dialogue between two other people. Fuck right. the Patriots. Yeah, yeah, so, fuck the Patriots. Yeah. <laughs> so boring. The so fucking boring. whitest game ever, I swear to God. So boring. Two white-ass groups of dudes battled over a fucking football while the guy who owns a cheese company still gets paid and then maroon five maroon does the five. sound oh my god it was the so bad shit on top of the other whitest shit yeah. accompanied by the other whitest shit i was really hoping that christina aguilera would bust out on stage and that one song the moves like jagger thing or like mick would show up and do oh the moves god. like no, him no but. because if Mick shows up, he has to beat Adam Levine to death with a fucking chair. And I would have been there for it. <laughs> I know I would too. Anyway, okay, so let's 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 don't let me digress you away from this. So, okay, so Super Bowl continue. You so my the thing that has I don't follow sports of any kind. Like okay, climbing is a sport, but not really. It's like you know. Okay. Okay. Um. The one thing that I've never understood, and I wanted to get your perspective on this as a former fan, because you you and Dan went out to wherever the fuck it was to watch a, a Ravens game. Cleveland, Cleveland. Ohio. Yes. Yeah. And um, that's great and all and stuff. What I've never understood is, like, I get being a fan of something, but, like, yeah. I don't understand the, like, they're fans that, that tie so much of their self-worth to the team of their city to the to the point where they will like physically fight a motherfucker like if you shit talk their their team that that person has if they step back no actual like buy buy into it like if if you talk shit about mike dent to my face i will i will grind your i will grind your head into like a wall because mike dent is bay you know Okay. Like right. people, people I know 
you know, I will, I, I'm a ride or die for, for my friends who are creators who are struggling and, and, you know, grinding shit out there and all that kind of stuff. Like I have a personal connection with these people. So like, I understand it from that perspective, from a team perspective, like I understand enjoying something or like rooting for your favorite, this or that, but I don't know if you ever got into the mindset where like you would fight a motherfucker for shit talking the Ravens. Um, um, not intentionally, no. Now, I, I will let me let me tackle a few things uh, out of the gate here. Okay. So, um, for the the short version of why I don't watch football anymore, by the way, was because of the Ray Rice thing. Um, oh yeah. I know I'm like well behind everything, but once I saw a team, the team that I supported being implicit in covering up a, a spousal abuse case, that was when it was a bridge too far for me. I then decided to sign off on the entire NFL after a uh, team or sorry a player from I believe the Texans, I don't remember his name. I believe it's Adrian Peterson, but I may be incorrect here. Mm -hmm. Uh, There was a story about him pulling a switch off a tree and beating his son with it. Now, 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 and understand in context here, I I understand why he did it in his head. It was how he was raised. Well, here's the thing. It was how he was raised. It's how his parents were raised. You use physical violence to discipline a child. I do not have children. I should not be armchair quarterbacking about how to raise your children. I do firmly believe that beating a child is only going to add to something negative. I don't want to support that sort of thing. I don't believe in spousal abuse. I I think there's a lot of hypocrisy in the NFL. Oh, yeah. I'll pull with – uh, okay. painkillers and other things and look the other way on steroid use and everything else like that. But the second that somebody smokes a blunt, they they suddenly decide to suspend them for their wellness policy. I I do not enjoy recreational drugs or for the record, not just for employers, but just in general. I drink. That's my only jam. Mm-hmm. Um, I podcast. So <laughs> right on. So like I that's why I decided to, to leave watching the NFL. It was the only thing that I could do to affect everything. I do my best not to be a dick to anybody who watches the NFL. You still enjoy it? Cool. Yeah. I do really genuinely believe that there are a lot of great people who both watch and also play for the NFL. Yeah. If you're ever curious about some of the great people, the Walter Payton Awards, they just they do it every year for um, the Super Bowl and for the, uh, the Hall of Fame thing. Every year, uh, someone gets awarded a Walter Payton Award for giving back to their community, whether they're helping out hospitals or whatever it is. And like a lot of these guys use their fortunes and use their fame to definitely benefit others. Yeah, yeah. That's not to be ignored. I, I, I definitely I say see that this because a lot of people get real serious about football and sports <laughs> fans. Um, and I don't want to discredit any of the hard work they're putting into. I have an issue with the NFL as a whole, not necessarily the players themselves. Sure. Sure. Okay. That said, so <sighs> When I was a fan and Dan and I went to Cleveland, we went because uh, we wanted to do a road trip. This was when uh, my my now wife and Dan's now wife were kind of getting to know the rest of the group. We decided to come up with a like, hey, we're all mutually into football. It was actually world's cheaper to take. By the way, realistic idea. It was cheaper for four of us to travel from Baltimore to Cleveland, Ohio, (laughs) rent a hotel room that we all shared, pay for four tickets to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and also a dinner at Michael Simon's restaurant and sit in the end zone that it was for four tickets at Ravens Stadium. Holy shit. The equivalent tickets at Ravens Stadium, by the way, we were, I don't know, 20 rows back in one of the end zones. Oh, my God. It was ridic- It is ridiculously expensive to have tickets at Ravens Stadium. Cleveland, to their credit and both discredit, they're very kind fans, at least most of them, especially the ones that we were sitting with. Um, the stadium is very nice. They, they don't have a great team, so it's easy for them to sell cheaper tickets. Right, right. We sat next to really nice fans. We sat down next to them. We had all our gear on. We had our faces painted, whole nine. Guys like... There's only way I can one way I can say this. If you're not going to be a dick, I'm not going to be a dick. I'm happy to, that you're here to cheer for your team. And I went, good talk. That's and awesome. Like, we, yeah. we shook hands, and then that was it. And when they scored, I I immediately went, good on you, nice job, really good job, and like high five the guy. And we ended up winning. And we, you know, I thanked him for being a cool fan sitting next That's to us. That's really like, cool. That's awesome. For being a good dude. So like, now mind you. Contrast to that, on the way to the stadium, 
We were in full gear. We're walking from the hotel. We stayed at a hotel that was in, within walking distance of the stadium. The stadium and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame are both in relatively the same area. Cleveland definitely got smart about how they laid out everything. They're like, There's like four hotels that are right near that area. They're within walking distance of everything. The downtown area is within walking distance right there. And they make it very clear to you like, hey, stay in this bubble because if you don't, you might end up getting beaten. Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I literally like I remember asking the concierge like, hey, what direction should we head for food? And he looks at me and he goes, you want to go out the front door and you want to turn left, not right, <laughs> left. And I was like, cool. And he's like, seriously, go left. And I was like, OK. And literally like we walked out the door. It was like slightly near dusk. And all I could think was that moment in uh, in the Lion King when Simba asked Mufasa, what's that dark place? And he's like, we don't go there. We don't go that, there. Right, yeah, like only where the light touches is our home. Like that's that's where we go. In I said the light touches Simba. Ser- fucking seriously. So <laughs> so on our way on Sunday morning to the game itself, I'm I'm dressed up. I've got my hat on. I've got my jersey on. I've got the whole nine on. I've got face paint on. The wife's got face paint. Dan and his wife both have face paint. We're all dressed up in our jerseys, and we go walking to the game. And we're with a bunch of other Ravens fans, and there are Cleveland fans who are hanging out of their car windows, cussing at us, threatening us, bucking at us. Now, I am who I am. (laughs) I don't intimidate easy, and I like getting called out like i enjoy (laughs) confrontation to an unhealthy level i had about half a bottle of jaeger before we went to the game (laughs) jesus so i was ready to go so we started walking down there and some dude bumped into me or whatever it was and he was wearing his cleveland gear and he like almost fell over, told me to watch where I was going. And I immediately in the most dick thing I could say is oh, you almost hit the ground. That's kind of where you belong, wearing what you're wearing. And like oh. so I was I was ready to go. This is after I've been yelled at and everything. So I am just as guilty as everybody else. Right. It is a real mob mentality when it comes to football. You go in. You all adhere to your local team. It's very aggressive. Football's figured out something that most other sports haven't. Also, the regular season only has 16 games. Wow. Now, to give you a realistic comparison, baseball, which I genuinely enjoy. I've been an Orioles fan for fucking ever. It is the most boring thing to watch on TV. It I is. Don't it really is. Baseball, but I have the best time going to the to, to Camden Yards. The stadium like, is amazing. The stadium is beautiful, and it's really well laid out, and it's a beautiful day, and you get a lot of great food, and it's just a lot of fun being at the park. And I grew up with that. Like, literally, my fondest memories, because, like, it got built in the early 90s when I was kind of coming of age. So, like, I got to experience a transition from Memorial Stadium when I was five or six years old to then when I was seven, eight, nine going into Camden Yards when it was brand new. And it looks as good today as it did then. It is an awesome facility. Yeah. Because of this, I have a love of baseball that's a little unhealthy and. I don't shy away from it, but I also won't fight anyone. Now, mind you, yeah. I've been in arguments at, at Oreo Park with Yankee fans, with Boston fans. Fucking dickheads. So, <laughs> nothing I can do. So, I get this. But the difference is, is that baseball has 162 games. Yeah. We're talking about more than 10 times the amount of chances to win. When you multiply the amount of chances to win by 10 – the volume of animosity toward other people just starts to kind of melt away. Like, I may not like Yankee fans. I may not like Red Sox fans. I fucking can't stand Cleveland Indian fans because that logo is racist as fuck. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. Anyway. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I mean, Redskins aren't any better. Uh, I would argue that the Redskins logo is not nearly as offensive as the fucking Cleveland Indians logo. Yeah, the name. The, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the name aside, I get that. And I know in more recent things that Cleveland has changed it to basically just a C because they realize what's going on. <laughs> but that is that is putting a Band-Aid over a real racist wound. Yeah, that. And yeah, I, I digress. So when when you like imagine, Jamie, if I told you. 
you have an opportunity to be art fight champion. Right. And in the 10 years that you did art fight, you had 15 chances to be art fight champion. Right. Okay. You feel like that's a lot of chances over 15 years or over 10 years. Like I get a chance sometimes more than twice a year to really like swing a bat at that belt and knock it out of the park and really have a chance to like hang on to that bad boy. Yeah. And what if I told you you had one chance? Well, see, it's it's different because the the difference between Art Fight and other shows is that the belts the belts matter, but our goal as Art Fighters is always for the audience to have a good time. I don't give a shit who wins. Like okay. when 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 time travel Brian Prindeville came up on stage, that was the greatest shit in the entire universe. And like there was no way that me and Storm Sketch deserved to win because that was amazing. <laughs> I, I get that. Okay, now let me let me double back here and say, what if winning the Art Fight Championship every time meant a hundred grand cash in your pocket? Well, that's different. <laughs> because the minimum salary for an a a major league baseball player is well over four hundred thousand. Yeah. When these guys win the Super Bowl, it's not a few grand bonus. It's a few hundred grand bonus. It's your jersey selling over and over again. It's marketability for next year. It's your ability to go somewhere else and maybe prolong your career for three, four, ten years. And some of these signing bonuses are millions of dollars. So imagine that you had 16 chances to turn your salary from a league minimum, let's say, 500,000 into seven million over three years. No, I I understand I understand it on the player's side, but that right. money that money does not trickle down to the community unless you're like, um, fucking Wisconsin, the it, green the Packers, because the city owns it, the Packers and they they it, get some of that. But like, right. no, it, it doesn't. However, a winning team means that you get to enjoy going to the games because you only get sixteen chances. The Orioles don't win on a Sunday. It's okay. Right. I still had a great time at the park. The Ravens don't win on a Sunday. And then the Ravens don't win on a Sunday. And then the Ravens don't win on a Sunday. And then the Ravens don't win on a Sunday. And then the Ravens don't win on a Sunday. Then you know what it's like to be a Redskins fan. (laughs) Right. But like, ask a Redskins fan after they've already determined who is in the postseason and they're eight and six or, you know, they're six and eight. Yeah how they feel about spending money on Redskins tickets yeah, or Redskins jerseys yeah, or whatever it is. Like it takes money out of your own pocket and you start to really hold a lot of city pride. And man, Maryland is fucking guilty of some flag pride of some city pride. We have got a chip on our shoulder, the size of a fucking marble stoop. Like (laughs) we do not play around with that sort of thing. Yeah. We know we're not New York. We know we're not Boston. We know we're not Philly. We will remind everyone that like Virginia, Virginia doesn't have a baseball team. Fuck Virginia. They don't have a football team either. Fuck it. Redskins, they play in Laurel. They're a Maryland team, whether they claim to DC or not. Like, that's the idea. Like, that's that's the sort of mentality here is like, our state is literally like, what, a third of the size of Virginia's? And they still couldn't find a halfway decent place in Virginia to fucking play. Like, that sort of thing is not lost on a Maryland sports fan. That sort of animosity toward other people and the tribalism is like anything else. It's like politics. Right. Just imagine that it was. You know, thirty-two different political parties all so, fighting for their own thing. But like, here, here's here's the big difference, and I and I hear that because the way people feel about sports, I feel about politics. The the thing, though, for me at least, is that who's in office, who's in who is in local office, what party does what, who party stands for what, that has a direct effect on not only my life but Hazel's future. Right. Whether or not the fucking skins win has no effect on its morale. Yeah. It's strictly morale. Like, imagine if your political party had the ability to actually throw down in a fist fight. Oh, yeah. Like, if every year we had prospects, our, our, our House, you know, our senators and our congressmen all ended up getting into a bracket. Like, the Democrats nominated, you know, uh, eight people 
to go and physically fight for them. <laughs> Like it's you know like it's it's John Lewis versus fucking Mitch McConnell oh in a God. goddamn round one, oh, and we do dude. a Sweet Sixteen tournament yeah. to determine who gets to actually control Congress. Yeah, I mean like, that would be amazing. Like if we if we just decide that the Democrats and the Republicans split the House fifty fifty, and the one the House leadership is determined by fist fight. Like <laughs> that is essentially the idea here, right? So like. Imagine how much that changes Congress. Imagine how much that changes your viewing of everything and how much – how excited you'd be for the fucking blood sport yeah. because you'd be immediately be like there needs to be some sort of liberal leading kid in Iowa who's like 6'6", 330 yeah. who can just fucking catch these Break hands. shit house, yeah. Right, yeah, right. So like you're suddenly way more interested in who can do push-ups than necessarily who <laughs> believes in this stuff. Yeah. So like – it ends up becoming almost boxing chess where like we elect people in Maryland. You know, we, we've got two seats in Maryland and we go, OK, here's the person that we want to come up with the ideas. And here's Brock Lesnar. Yeah. So <laughs> we have to figure out. How do we beat Brock? <laughs> right. So like imagine if every year we determine it, not every six, not every four, every year we get a chance to decide who has the highest morale, who gets to walk around with their chest puffed out, their dick swinging in between <laughs> the legs, going, whose house? Right, right. But the thing, the, thing, the thing about it is that only works for people who give a shit about sports. Yeah. Like, I, I couldn't care less. I, I hate the Patriots. I don't give a shit. Like, if, yeah, but, but if a Patriots fan came out to me and said, hey, my team won, I'd be like, Right, but, Great. Are you going to buy a print or what? <laughs> like, you right, know. but that's that's the thing, Jamie. It's like any other subculture. Mm -hmm. There's a ton of things that you care about that other people don't. Yeah, yeah sure, so sure. It happens to be one of those things that catches on with a lot of people. So it becomes part of the lexicon. It becomes part of culture. But I would never it's, fight a motherfucker for stuff. Like, if you don't like Common Rider, I'm not going to beat your ass. And that's that's the part I don't understand. That's like the fans that will what, what fight if, the shit out, like beat the shit out of each other for that stuff. What what if somebody actually took your favorite Kamen Rider helmet off of another fan and took a shit in it? Well, that's different. To punch a guy in the face? Yeah, I would punch that person in the face. Uh, okay, so you so you for a subset immediately figure out a way the physical violence is a okay. Yeah, well, like if you're shitting, if you're literally shitting on somebody, you deserve a punch in the face. <laughs> I, 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 like all I'm saying is, is I have seen at sporting events a person have a jersey pulled off by somebody else, stomped physically through the mud, or pissed on. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't, I don't, and and I don't like, and please understand, there's a big difference in between a common rider fan walking around a convention and a drunken sports fan, right? Because please understand that there are a couple also factors here that we need to take into account. There are people who don't have a whole lot going on. No offense to them, they're hardworking people, but. This is the thing that they get to focus on. This is the thing that they get to hang their hat on. They get to cheer for their team. They get to enjoy their thing. They get to spend their hard-earned money by taking the family out to go to whatever, whether it's baseball or football or hockey or basketball or whatever the thing is that they decide is their thing. It is the thing that they grew up on. There's a good chance that their father or mother raised them on it. Mm -hmm. You know, I am an Orioles fan from way back. I get it from my dad. My dad gets it from his dad. It, you know, like it is, it is just the thing, and we we wear it as a badge of honor. Uh -huh. So the idea of somebody really shitting on that, especially when you don't have a whole lot of opportunities, especially with football, I really think that adding alcohol, <laughs> adding all of the TV coverage and over analyzing. Yeah, God, that's the whole, that industry is crazy. There were five hours of pregame. And Jamie, let me, let me double back a second. There's a team of people that could pay multiple millions of dollars a year to talk about the logistics and capabilities <laughs> about a dude catching a ball. <laughs> what you're saying, Brandon, is that we are in the wrong business. <laughs> like your job as a as a wide receiver is to catch a ball like yeah you need to learn plays you need to do this you need to do that but like you don't get paid unless you catch a ball 
Yeah. I don't know how to change that for anybody, but what <laughs> I, and I've been there on, on the receiving end of this. There's nothing more exciting than having that moment in the Super Bowl when you watch your team and the player that you cheer for, that you decide is the guy that you like because he talks shit or jaws off with somebody or he's super stoic or he's really good to his community or whatever it is. And he, he goes to fucking <laughs> screen. Right. Like he goes, he runs that screen. He goes out 35 yards. He cuts in exactly where he's supposed to be. He jukes his other player. He fucking leaps toward the sky. And in a moment that you can't believe, the other guy hucks that ball 40 yards mm-hmm. and then with one hand plucks that bad boy out of the sky, tucks in and hits the ground, takes an acknowledgement of everything going around him and goes, fuck all of you. <laughs> Victory is mine. And fucking hauls ass. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Like, it's fucking exciting. It is – Everything that we have been bred to enjoy in pop culture. It's it's Rocky fighting the Russians. It's <laughs> like it's every action movie. It's Vin Diesel fucking winning the race. Like it is it is everything that you want. Only it's not a script. It's not a predetermined. It is in that moment, that person, yeah, okay, he caught a ball and I can pick on him for just catching a ball. Yeah, yeah. But at that moment, there are only but so many, you know, it's 32 NFL teams. There's probably what, uh, 30 guys on each team. Like when you look at them, the mass populace of America and how many people actually play, you know, like peewee football and high school and college football, you're talking what? 1%? Yeah. You're better than the 1%. Of the 1% of the other teams of the other 32 guys who managed to beat it through 16 other games to get there, to juke all of those guys, to then end up in the end zone? Fuck, you're good. You're real good. Yeah. So when I end up being at a family function or a friend gathering or whatever it is, and there's a fan of the other team there, and I look at you across the room and I go, <laughs> <laughs> Am I a douchebag? Yes. Am I owning <laughs> things that I did not accomplish? Fucking absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Am I still enjoying the shit out of it? Yeah, because for one fleeting moment, I got to grab onto that guy's coattails and say that we did it. <laughs> we did it. I I have my jersey on inside yeah, out. Yeah. Cap on inside out. I, I I I crossed my fingers. I made sure that I ate my special breakfast that I've been eating for the last sixteen <laughs> weeks. I know what's going. Like I, I did the things. Got my special socks on. Like yeah. it was a thing that I did. I wore the same jersey for every game. I remember at one point I was joking around with my wife where we were watching hardcore and like any time we'd get into like red zone end of the game think that we may lose we had a policy where we had to stand on our sofa stand (laughs) otherwise we were convinced that they wouldn't win that's amazing and every time we stood they won and that (laughs) we went to the super bowl now i can tell you i know the scientific brain in me says we didn't have shit to do with that right right right, right. possible but there's that little part in your brain that goes i don't fucking stand they're gonna lose and i can't do that (laughs) I, like we got yeah, here. You ha- you, we did this. We, we did this. We got They're here, from yes. my city, even though they didn't grow up here. They're from my city. <laughs> so the short version is we sports fans are all fucking idiots and we're glory hogs and we want to be part of something greater, but we're all mediocre fucks. So we're all going to put the jersey on and we're going to think we did this because it makes us feel good for a fleeting moment because that's all we really have anymore. All right. I get that. I get that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like. In a, in a super depressing way, that's the only real way it makes sense. Is it childish? Absolutely. Is it dumb? Fuck yes. Is it uh, really, really frustrating for some of the things that happened? Yeah, because politics and people are fucking terrible. And right. I could rally about another 20 things that the NFL bothers me about fucking Colin Kaepernick. But Jesus that, Christ. Yeah. But I, I, so I see it. Like, things. Yeah. But for that fleeting moment, <clears throat> even just joking around about it, for that fleeting moment – there was a guy that I watched come from another team, do his press conferences, deal with all the media stuff, have all the idiot fans all fight with everybody. Like, okay, give you an idea why I love sports. 
I went to an Orioles fan fest. OK, Orioles do a thing every year in January. They ran out of the convention center. You go over there. There's a bunch of sports vendors. They all sell Orioles gear. There's all a bunch of special stuff. They do like art and stuff like that. And they also do meet and greets with the players. Think of it like Orioles con. <laughs> nice. Like, That's cool. Right. And it's a super cool thing. And like the players are all super fun and like they do cool things for the kids. Like they, uh, one of the players is super known for chewing way too much bubble gum and like blowing big bubbles. So like he had a bubble gum chewing contest with a bunch of like kids <laughs> 10 and under. That's right. So awesome. It was, like, he shoves a bunch of big lead chew in his mouth and they all do the same thing. And then he stands near them. Right. And they all have a bubble off to see who can beat him with the bubble. And if you beat him with the bubble, he like he gives you a signed jersey, he gives you a signed bat, and then he invites you to a game and you get to be the bat boy or the the, the ball chaser or whatever it is for the thing. So like you get to dress oh, up. Oh, that's awesome. You, know, you get to hang out with all the players. And yeah. like there is one day in that kid's life for that 11 or 12 year old where that is their fucking world. Yeah. And they feel special. And that is super cool. Uh-huh. Anyway, so one of my favorite coaches, the one that they just let go. Um, <clears throat> His name is Buck Showalter, and they call him Buck because back in the, I believe, 70s, he got very famous for not wanting to do interviews. And his way of getting out of doing interviews is he would walk out of the locker room or out of the showers completely naked and then start answering questions until everyone just left him alone. So <laughs> now, mind you, this is a different time. You can't get away with this now. But Buck's whole thing is if you want to ask me a question about catching a ball, you're going to have to stare at my dick. That's how this is. This is going to be the trick. Off. This, <laughs> That's the now, best kind of trolling. I love I, it. I like this guy. So Buck shows up and it's like his first year coaching and he sits down and there's this big fan Q&A, right? So they're sitting down with Buck. They're sitting down with this guy, Dan Duquette, who is like the, the head of the team for the corporate side or whatever it is. And Buck, before he gets started, he tells the guys, guys, I'm happy to answer whatever questions you have about the future of the team and some questions about logistics and whatever it is. But let me be very clear. I have not decided on the lineup. There are a lot of guys who are unsigned, and I will not answer any speculative questions one way or the other. These involve real players, their real lives. And if I start to say, yeah, I'm super interested in this guy, but not necessarily this guy, that can cause real financial problems for them. And I may or may not have done all the research on these guys. I'm not going to do that to them. Yeah, that's trying that's, to be respectful. Yeah, because he was up. a player. He gets it. So the first fucking guy, of course, like any convention goes. So are you going to sign blah, 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 blah? Buck, being Buck, leans in. He goes, you hard of hearing? <laughs> and the guy goes, no. And he goes, what did I just say? He's like, I don't know. Sit down. <laughs> Next question. And you watch everyone whose staff gets suddenly uncomfortable because they realize they can't rein Buck in. Yeah. It's going to be Buck, whether he's talking to a reporter, one of his players, or some random mook from Dundalk. Like, he's going <laughs> to handle this guy the same exact way. And sure yeah. enough, the second guy, like in a fucking firing line, walks right up, super cocky and confident, and, and just goes, Sam, let me ask you a question. Are you going to sign yada, yada, yada? <laughs> oh, Jesus. And Buck goes, you know... In the interest of fairness, you may have been out in the room. You may have been using the restroom. You may not have understood what was going on. You may not speak English. I'm not really clear what's going on. Uh, we do have a sign language translator up here provided by the convention centers of this way. If you are hearing impaired, you can hear this. I'm not going to talk about the following things. Sit down. <laughs> oh, that's great. And Buck continues for the next 20 minutes. To tell person after person to sit down. And I fell in love. Yeah, that's 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 awesome. And those sort of guys are why I love sports. Mm-hmm. And they're all over the place. Yeah. So to, to wrap up, Jamie, you should in, be able to enjoy these things just like any other fandom and everything else like that. Just I ask you, the sports fan, if you happen to be watching or anything, don't live and die by it. It's yeah. a game. Yeah, it, it's it's a game. Yeah. And if you don't have a whole lot going on, I think you should probably ask yourself the question, why am I dying by this one thing? Mm-hmm. I get it. The day of the day after, you know, if 
if you're a Rams fan, you're a diehard Rams fan, and today was a little better than yesterday, but Sunday was kind of crushing, I get it. I totally get it. If you're a Ravens fan and you're still angry about Sunday, you you should probably go do something about that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, so, um, <clears throat> yeah. Are you going to watch the XFL? <laughs> I mean, I watched it the last time. I don't know why not. Oh, that reminds me. If you're a wrestling fan and you did not completely cut out on Adam Levine and go watch the the halftime heat, the wrestling pay-per-view that happened. Right. You need to watch it. It's a fucking 20. Even if you're not a wrestling fan, it's on YouTube. It was on Twitter. It was on Twitch. It was on other things. You should be able to go back and watch it totally for free. You totally go watch it. Awesome. It is the best of the best of the best of the best of wrestling. It does not have any of the stupid tropes or any of the racist BS or anything else like that. It is just a hell of a lot of action and a lot of fun from their secondary league NXT, which are their upstarts. You should totally go watch Flippy doos. It, flippy doos on top of flippy doos on top of false finishes and man is it good it's so good so good anyway yeah as i as i i rant about how you shouldn't be serious about uh <laughs> fandom and then i get weird about a fucking pre-scripted tv show but i don't give a fuck yeah um athleticism yeah, it, is wow it, it's like anything else but hopefully that gives you an idea of like why people get weird about football. I, I think I have a better understanding. I get it. I, I get it. I think it's silly. But then again, I think getting all butt hurt when somebody talks shit about your DBZ character get, is silly. Like, yeah. it's like any fandom. Yeah. The only difference is, is that football is just really widely accepted, especially among people who aren't necessarily allowing themselves to get into some of the more niche fandoms. Yeah. I think if some of these people were totally cool with getting into anime or video games or whatever it is, that's fine. But I think a lot of them had the the douchey parents who were like, no son of mine going to listen to this shit. So yeah, yeah, all, yeah. we all gather around the real people rather than the fictional characters. And this is what we decided to be butthurt over. <laughs> yeah. Just don't go into comics. That's just another <laughs> piece of shit. <laughs> God damn it. Fucking. Yeah, shitheads are everywhere. All right, Brandon. Can they find you? Uh, you find me on this channel, uh, Jamie Noguchi on Instagram, Angry Zen Master yep. on Twitter. Uh, that's usually where I'm at. Uh, Brandon, where can they find you? They can find me on Instagram only, because fuck them. Uh, at that guy Chalmers. And if you want to, I'm genuinely deathly serious about this. If you want to go visit a national park, hit your homie up. I'm interested in taking people who have never been. I'm interested in going. We can take the dog. We can not take the dog. But it's a life experience you should go and do. Yeah. We've got a lot of really awesome ones within a decent drive here. And uh, if you decide that you're like, hey, Brandon, I want to spend a little more time with you and I want to go fly out somewhere. It's a little creepy, but I'm in. <laughs> not a hard no. Okay. Put <laughs> that out there. A little, little, little wink and a nod. We, we got to get you out to San Diego or to PAX at some time. One of those. One of those. You're- Okay, by the way, I'd like to give you an idea of my desire to go out to the middle of nowhere and go see mountains and lakes. And you're like, hey, you should go to a sweaty nerd convention. Man, you uh, you get me. I don't know if you realize this. You, it's, you get me. It's mostly because of the people. It's not big, no, big. Yeah, no, that, that's my problem. It's mostly because of the people. Yeah. If, if I could experience this in the middle of nowhere i would be totally fine we need we need to we need to do like brandon con where we find a national park and we just invite all of the people that we normally no, see at shows no 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 that's the whole secret well, no, no, brandon no. con is a gofundme to cover my travel to avoid <laughs> everyone else that's what it is you you pay a ticket you pay a nominal fee to send me somewhere so this way i don't have to deal with all of you for a no, weekend no, no. we get the opinions may vary crew down we get phil chan i that that just sounds like an excuse for my birthday like we can do that instead all right well <laughs> Yeah, we'll just get a whole bunch of people down. By the way, that's that's something I do want to talk about. I have an idea for my birthday, and I don't know when we can do it, but I think I may scare everyone else out of it because I want to do a scavenger hunt. Fun. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Anyway, all right. Jamie Yoshi, let's go do the thing. Hold I don't on. know what we can go do, but let's not do this anymore. Okay, bye. <laughs>